welcome everybody to a brand new season of Full Metal Trivia. That's right, we are in season number five, and this is the debut match. I am Sandy the Sandman Robinson, and I have a co-host with me that you guys might know. He's becoming a bit of a legend killer himself up in the main show, the movie trivia showdown. He is Adam Collins. Hey, Adam, how you doing today? Hey, Sandman. Happy to be back uh, here at Full Metal uh, hosting. Is this the is this the season opener that you have me here for? It is the season opener. Oh, I'm today. honored, sir. I'm honored. Uh, all the more, all the more fanfare required. Absolutely. You know what? It's been a long. It's it's been not a long time, but it's been enough time that's passed that uh, we're happy to have you back. It's a, it's 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 great to see somebody who's doing so well up in the big show. Um, how's your career going up there? Oh, no complaints so far. Uh, but yeah, it's a uh, it's a lot of hard work. Um, you know, I, I've definitely s stepped up my game as high as I can take it. So. Uh, just, just hoping to, you know, keep up, keep up the momentum and, you know, I, I, I don't want to burn out early. So I have a lot of, I have a lot of, uh, uh, drive to, to make it competitive in this tournament. Absolutely. Well, from, uh, well, from up, uh, a, a competitor patriot of yours when you were down, uh, down in the leagues down in here to now a fan, I'm happy to have you back. Thanks so much for being a part of this with me. But what do you think, what do you think about getting these uh, competitors in here today to get some action going? I am ready for Adelaide versus Philadelphia. Absolutely. Let's get some introductions. Introducing first, he has a record of O and one. He is and has a strength of 80s slasher movies. Uh, not always a fan, but he comes in as Bill. Philadelphia Cariola. And you will never watch a cat. Uh, a man of principle. Never. Never. <laughs> never. <laughs> And his opponent coming into the ring with a O and O record with a strength of 2010's live action musicals. They are Adelaide Spence. I have seen cats twice. I was worried for a dude today. So just some basic, I am Jack's I, surprise, so. <laughs> some basic <laughs> understanding of why this match is going to be contentious is a little while ago to give Andrew James Barr, our head question writer, a little bit of a break. Adelaide was gracious enough to write the entire match, which was awesome, except the questions that he asked. Because um, I was in that match too, and so was Bill. And it was cat's question after cat's question. It was just, it was, it was, it was a gong show. Um, Let, let's clarify the category was cats. That's why there were multiple. I'm not that crazy. <laughs> it was great. We had a great time that day, but you could just see by the end of that match, Bill's head was getting larger and larger, and smoke was coming out of it. I'm sorry, um, I've never seen Swedish cinema. <laughs> <laughs> so Jay, Andrew James Barr and I got together and said, you know what? The first match of the season has to be this grudge match between these two worthy competitors. So we are going to jump right into it, guys. Adam, can you read them the rules <clears throat> for round number one, please? Sure thing. All right, folks. In round one, every competitor gets eight questions from eight different categories. For each question, they have 15 seconds to write an answer down. After time is up, competitors show and say what they wrote. A correct answer is worth one point. If a competitor answers all eight questions correctly, they will receive a bonus question. Absolutely. Uh, and guys, just a quick reminder, you guys all have three repeats and one challenge. If you're going to challenge, please make sure that the challenge, you know exactly what you're challenging. It has to be specific. It can't just be general. Um, and hands on screen as much as possible. Um, <clears throat> And we have somebody backstage who will remind us if anybody has deviated from that. But, Adam, time to get going. Let's get them with question number one. Good luck, guys. All right. Your first question uh, comes in the category of animation. 
What animated film features a restaurant named Gusto's? You know, you got to think that that's either a seafood restaurant or just a really cool restaurant because Gusto is a great name. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it sounds it sounds like a franchise. Hmm. That's right. All right. I'm going to give you guys five, four, three, two, and a one. We're going to start with Bill. Ratatouille. And Adelaide. It's not quite a franchise, but they did want to make Gusto branded frozen food. Ratatouille. That's correct. A uh, great start we're off to today with both competitors getting that first question correct. As we move into category and question number two is in recent releases. Question. Hold on. What 2020 film features a cast that includes John Gallagher Jr., T.J. Miller, and Kristen Stewart. So, um, we had films come out in 2020, Sandy? That's what I was wondering. I think that they were in the can for uh, being made in like 1992, and now they're just putting them all out in 2020. They're finally releasing Grizzly 2, starring Laura Dern and George Clooney. <laughs> Five, four... Three, two, and one. Pens down. Spence, what do you got? It's underwater. And Bill. No idea, so I guess Charlie's Angels. Both good guesses. And Adelaide is correct on that one. It is underwater. I watch all those movies, and that's why I'm terrified of the water. <laughs> We need to do a Leviathan commentary sometime, Sandy. Yeah. All right. Uh, category uh, number three comes in the category of action adventure. And your question is, in what decade is the majority of 1999's The Mummy set? Ooh. Now, I did a marathon last year of uh, all three Mummy films. So the original, this one, and the Tom Cruise. And that was a, that was a rough landing at the end. It was a rough landing. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, and one. Pens down, although I did like Russell Crowe in that movie. <laughs> Bill, what'd you get? Uh, the 1920s. And Adelaide. Uh, the 1920s. Both correct again. Yeah. Look, and look well at that. Well done. Well done. Yep. All right, guys. <laughs> Question number four comes in the category of comedy. What Oscar-winning actor had an early role as Annie's off-kilter brother Dwayne in Annie Hall? Do you have a brother named Dwayne, Sandy? I, I don't. Um, and I don't Nor do I. Another brother, Dwayne. Um, but... <laughs> I didn't make that club either. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give you guys five, four, three, two, and one. Pens down. Spence, what do you got? Never seen it, but I like this guy. Willem Dafoe. And Bill. We are in sync. <laughs> You are in sync with the unfortunate wrong actor. Uh, good guess, but we were looking for Christopher Walken. No. I was literally thinking. On the that. right track. <laughs> you yeah. guys were on the right track. All yeah. right. All right. Uh, your next uh, question comes in the category of Oscars. As of today, what is the last biopic to win Best Picture? I would love to see a Christopher Walken biopic now that I think of it. So good. Who would play and him? Willem Dafoe. Uh, yeah, Willem Dafoe would play him. <laughs> that I would I would pay extra to see that. Five. Directed by Werner Herzog. Four. <laughs> Three. Two. And one. Pens down. We are going to start with. 
I have no idea. It's a stab at the artist. And Adelaide. Fucking kill me, Green Book. Green Book is the correct answer. Also the original right. subtitle of the film. Yes, I <laughs> I blocked that movie from my mind. <laughs> all right, guys. The next category is in one of my favorite categories of all time. It is non-US films. The Pacino film, Scent of a Woman, was a remake of a film from what country? Christ. And no, no, there is no country called Hua. None. I'm trying to think of quotes from that movie, and uh, I can't, I can't quote them on the air. I don't think it'd be appropriate. <laughs> that scene on the plane. Oof. Oh, five, four, three, two, and one. Pens down. Spence, what do you got? She's got a great Italy. And Bill. Well, for once we have separated, I said France. And not for the, the first time, Adelaide is correct. Yeah! Italy, Italy is the correct answer as we move into question number seven. Yeah, coincidentally, there is a very prominent Ferrari scene in that film. So a little clue there, I guess, maybe. Um, all right, question number seven. The category is sci-fi fantasy. What are the three people who predict murders known as in Minority Report? Ooh. Mm. This is one that people still tend to remember fondly. I like this movie. I just watched it the other day, and it's pretty all right. All right, I see everybody's boards up. So five, four, three, two, and one. Bill, what do you got? Uh, Precogs. And Spence. My second favorite Spielberg, Precogs. There you go. We will accept that answer. All right, and we're going to move into your final question of this round. There will be no perfect rounds, but... Your eighth question is in the category of plot summary. A young produced, a young produced, produce. Oh, sorry, yeah, there. A young produce distributor from New York City falls in love with a young woman who happens to be a mermaid. Pretty much the gimme oh. of the round. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Adelaide, we're going to start with you. I think it was released in 1974. Splash? And Bill. It was released in 1984. It was Splash. <laughs> I said 84, right? I said 74. Give or take a decade. Give or take a decade. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's only 10 years. Well, See, I wanted right. to say something about the mermaid from the lighthouse, but I didn't. <laughs> In case anyone guessed that, I didn't want to ruin it. Is it not the Polish musical The Lure released in 2015? <laughs> it is not. It's literally not that. <laughs> All right, guys. We are going to take a quick timeout right now while everybody gets a drink of water and I calculate some scores. And we will be right back with round number two. All right, guys, we're back. And after that quick unscheduled break now, we have the scores. And Adelaide Spence is leading Bill Cariola seven to eight as we roll into round number two. Adam, how about you read the rules for round number two to these guys? All right. In round number two, the leading competitor will decide to go first or second. The player going first will bet on either red or black. The wheel will be spun and will land on either a category or a color. If a color is spun, the competitor with the corresponding color will choose a category for themselves or their opponent. If a category is spun, the competitor can choose to take it or respin. If they do respin, they will have to stick with whatever category the wheel lands on at that point. From the category, the competitor will receive four questions worth two points each. Multiple choice is available, reducing the point value to one point. Opponents can steal the points available if the question is answered incorrectly. Absolutely. So Adelaide, that means with you in the lead, you can choose to go first or second. Mm. Uh, just for clarifying, if I go second, do I also pick the color? Do I also pick the color second? Yes. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, sir. Yeah, I'll go second still. Okay. That means, Bill, you are going to go first. And what color would you like? Always bet on black. I want red. <laughs> we all win. Yeah, always bet on red. Win for everybody. All right, so I have. That was that it says. I have the handy dandy wheel. Ooh, uh, as soon as the light comes off of it, with the categories in there, and for our viewing audience at home, the categories that were selected for this round two are movie release dates. John Tuturo, Directors, These Hallowed Halls, that's movies set in college, the year 2010, Saturday Night Live alum, Walter Matthau, Going Courtin', those are courtroom films, hockey movies, 90s movies and the strength categories of 2010's live action musicals that is Spence's strength and 80s horror slasher movies that is Bill's strength as well as the aforementioned red and black a square or tiles something or other. Bill, are you ready for your first spin? Yeah, why the hell not? All right, I'm gonna put it on to your color. And here we go. Oh, where's it going? Where's it going? Where's it going? Oh, oh. Okay. black. I'm assuming you want to keep that and not spin away. I'll uh, then David. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll think I'll stick with that. Yeah. All so right. as your manager, I suggest you spin away because again, I did take black. So you want to you want to go to the next one? Nope, nope, not happening. But nice try. Thanks for playing. Yeah. What would, you, um, what would you like? I'll take SNL alums. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you like that slice. <laughs> All right. Uh, Adam, do you want to read these two, um, Bill? Yes. Uh, so, Bill, are you ready for your questions and SNL alums? Let's do it. Okay. Question number one. What film based on an SNL character features a band called the Louisiana Gator Boys? Ninety percent sure that's the Blues Brothers. Five. Blues Four. Brothers. Final answer. That is that unfortunately. Is Incorrect. A so would it be for, would it be Blues Brothers two thousand for a two point steal? <gasps> oh shit! God, I forgot. <laughs> oh, shit. Oof, that's a big swing right there. All right, moving on to question two. Question two: Which SNL alum has appeared in the following films: Wet Hot American Summer, Jay and Silent Bob reboot, and Marie Antoinette? Great, I've only seen one of those. <sighs> Multiple choice. Uh, yes, your options for multiple choice are A, Amy Poehler, B, Tina Fey, C, Molly Shannon, D, Janine Garofalo. Wow. Molly Shannon. That is correct for one point. one point. All right, moving on to question three. What film stars Adam Sandler as a man who lost his family on 9-11? Right over me. For Big two, two points. points. Big two points for Bill. All right, well done. Moving on to question number four, your final question. What SNL alum plays Ivan the Terrible in Night at the Museum, Battle of the Smithsonian? Multiple choice, because I didn't see it. So. Is it A, Anthony Michael Hall, B, Christopher Guest, C, Chris Parnell, or D, Daryl Hammond? I'm 
Christopher Guest? For one point. Oh, okay. Big one point right there. All right. We got four out of eight points available in that round for Bill. Did his job. Didn't that one one two point steal there is his tough one. But we're gonna move right over to Adelaide. Adelaide, are you ready for your spin this round? Yes. To clarify, is it nine to eight currently in my favor? It is a nine to eight, correct. Okay. All right. Got you on your color. If I could keep that. We go. Here we oh, go. Okay. oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> well, he has the opportunity now. Now he's got to think about this. What is he going to pick? Can I hear those categories again? Yes, you can. You're not going to. Your categories are movie release dates, John Turturro, directors. These Hallowed Halls, movie set in college, the year 2010, SNL alum, which is no longer available, Walter Matthau, Going Courtin, courtroom films, hockey movies, 90s movies, 2010s live action musicals, which is Adelaide's strength, and 80s horror slasher movies, Bill's strength. So I'm guessing they probably studied... A good bit of slasher horror. 90s. Thank you, I... Bill. Christ. Uh oh. oh. <laughs> Fuck you, Slumber Party Massacre 2. Let's go. <laughs> I know you boned up on that, so there's no way. Oh, I, di I didn't study it fucking all. <laughs> oh, god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what right. shit I read I'm about? A fucking lizard king. Sons of bitches. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I will be proctoring these questions for you and your question number one. Are you ready? Sure. All right. Who plays Wild Bill Wharton in the Green Mile? Sam Rockwell. For two points. What? type of location sorry question number two what type of location did sam work at before being murdered in ghost maybe you're funny and actually the answer is pottery but i don't think that's true multiple choice <laughs> all right your multiple choice options are a bank b record store C, racetrack, or D, college? Bank? Bank is correct for one point. Sure. Working his way <laughs> through this category. All right, question number three in 1990s. What 90s film features Crunchum Hall Elementary School? What the fuck? Uh... Kindergarten cop. That is unfortunately incorrect. Chance for a, a two point steal for Bill. Can I hear that question again? Yeah, you can use one of your repeats. What yeah, film? What film? What nineties film features Crunchum Hall Elementary School? Not sound familiar at all. Five, four, three. Uh, the Flintstones. Ooh, unfortunately, not the right answer we were looking for. The answer we were looking for, Matilda. No, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and your last question in this round, Spence, is. In the film Fargo, Marge's husband Norm enters a painting of enters a painting of what bird into a stamp contest? 
I want to say I was going to watch this this week, and then the match came up, so I didn't have time for it. So fuck you, Bill. Multiple choice. <laughs> Your multiple choice options are A. Albatross, B. Mallard, C. Cardinal, or D. Lynette. D. Unfortunately, D is incorrect. Chance for a one-point steal. Your choices again are A, Albatross, B, Mallard, C, Cardinal, or D, Lynette. Mallard? For a one-point steal. All right, guys, that is the end of Ooh. round number two. Both players playing extraordinarily well. Let us take a quick break while we tabulate the scores before we get into round number three. All right, guys, we are back. And after a quick course score calculation, we have Spence is still in the lead with 12 points with Bill getting a little bit closer here. He was uh, was three points down. He's still three points down, but he's got a chance to get closer with his nine points. As we move into round number three, Adam, you know what I'm going to ask you. All right. In round number three, the rules are there, there will be one question worth two points and two questions worth four points each. There is no multiple choice available, but also no stealing. A wheel will be spun to determine the movie for each question. Players will have the option to respin only one time in round three, so choose wisely. If a movie has no questions remaining for a respective point value and a player lands on it, they will get a technical respin. The player behind will start answering questions first. Once that player ties or moves ahead of their opponent, the other player will get their first question. Each player will go back and forth answering their questions until a player is mathematically eliminated. Perfect. So as that means, Bill, you are trailing. So we're going to get your first question. And if you get it correctly, or if you don't get it correctly, we'll be moving into your second question before it moves back. To Spence, I have it right here. Are you ready for your roll? To do it. All right, here we go. I mean, six out of eight of these I've seen multiple times, so... You roll the Incredibles for your two point question. Okay. All right. Uh, Adam, you can read him his questions. Okay. All right, Bill. Your two pointer from the Incredibles. Mm -hmm. What is the name of Syndrome's female assistant that contacts Mr. Incredible? Mirage. For two points. Two points. Getting them just that much closer. And we're going to give you your first four-point roll. Are you ready? All right. As always. Mm -hmm. so I know. Uh, Bad Times El Royale was not on our deep. Yeah, that was not on our list. Yeah, give me a second. All right, Bill, you got your two-point question. You're ready for your first four-point question. Spin? Yes. All right, here we go. All right, we got waves. I get one respin, right? You get one respin. I'll save it. I'll take it. I'll take waste. Okay. All right. So the first four pointer for waves. Yep. What does Luke give Emily when he asks her out? A lollipop. For four points and the lead. Oh, oh, oh. that's a pull and a half right there. So right now we are at 12 to 15, but we're moving right into Adelaide. Adelaide, it is your turn. Are you ready for your first two point? Sure. 
All right, here we go. I could have just two point questions. That'd be nice. <laughs> that would, I, you know, I'm, I'm fine with that, actually. <laughs> My heart will hold out. Yeah, give it to me. All right, a vote, Schmidt. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who plays Randall Hertzell? Dermot Mulroney. For two points. America's favorite waterbed salesman. It's not Dylan McDermott, thankfully. <laughs> I know. I, I All the time. All the time. <laughs> I'm the same way. All right. So that moves you within one of Bill. We're into your first four-point question. You still have three repeats. You yeah. still have a respin. Are you ready? Yes. Here we go. I have a challenge if I don't like the question, right? <laughs> Come on, Ghostbusters oh, 2. <laughs> <laughs> Knives out. Give it. All right, here we go. To take back the lead, your first question in four point question in Knives Out mm -hmm. is where. Does Fran keep her marijuana stash? Oh, shit. I should have written this down. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to repeat the whole question correctly. Okay. What does Fran keep her marijuana stash in? Mm. I, could have, I could have moved it around the first time. Uh In a clock above the fireplace. For four points oh, in the oh, lead. <laughs> Nicely done. Oh, right. I haven't seen that in theaters. Thank fucking God. So we are now at 18 to 15 as we come to Bill, the Philadelphia, his last four point question to take the lead and force Adelaide Spence to answer their last question, Bill. Are you ready? You have two repeats left. You have one yep. respin. Here. Yes, I do. We go. Fuck you, Ghostbusters 2. Don't do it. Don't you fucking do it. All right. About Schmidt. I'll go again. All right. He's going to use his respin. Here it comes. Whatever you land on. I got it. Don't fucking do it. Fuck you, purple. Fuck you, purple. Damn it. The Incredibles. Right. Okay. Bear with me for one moment. There we are. All right. This is the the second uh, question, Sandy, or the first? No, it's the first. Okay. All right. In The Incredibles, what is the name of the machine Mirage first contacts Mr. Incredible about? Five, four, repeat, three. What, what is the name of the machine Mirage first contacts Mr. Incredible about? Five, four, three. Two. Or one. One, one, I don't remember. And your winner, Adelaide Spence. The answer we were looking for, Adam. It was the Omnidroid 9000. God damn it. Oh, oh my God. Thank you. Oh, fuck. 
Well, that was a heck of a match. Yeah, very close all the way through. Just got caught up in that stupid robot's name at the end there. We are going to come right back in just a second with our unfortunate second place player right now. Bill, you had it there in the in the palm of your hands. You played an amazing round number three. Just didn't yeah. get uh, that last question for you. How do you feel about your overall performance today? I mean, clearly not my best day. Uh, a little burned out, I think. So <laughs> this is the end of a long marathon month for me as far as uh, matches and work. And uh, I'm looking forward to not answering trivia questions for one week and like kind of resetting my brain, I think. So uh, that is not to take away from Spence. They played beautifully. Um, if you got to lose, lose to, lose to somebody that's like a friend that you like. So, uh, Absolutely. hats off to them. Uh, they played beautifully. Uh, they came prepared. They came ready to go. Um, did not give me any, any rest at all during the entire game. So, uh, no, I mean, uh, Spence more than earned it. They, they stepped up. So, um, I, good for them. So that's all I can say. Absolutely. No, and don't take anything away from yourself. I mean, you came back in round number two to, to score some points to keep you competitive. And like I said, you got the Incredibles two-pointer. You got the, the Waves four-pointer, which was not easy. Uh, I mean, I've seen that movie twice, and I didn't know what, it, what the answer was, and I was looking right at it. So congratulations on how you played. Adam, anything you want to add? Yeah, I think I think uh, you you showed a a, a lot of uh, heart coming back there at the end, and you made Spence sweat it out. That's for sure. Uh, I think you could see you could see the reaction in their eyes right there. So, uh, well done, Bill. Thank they you. were they were definitely sweating the fact that you might uh, uh, leave them with Ghostbusters too. So, uh, anybody else that you might think of, uh, you know, that you after you take a little break and recharge the noggin, uh, anybody else you're thinking about maybe uh, putting the beat down to? Uh, I mean, I don't know about beat down. Uh, I don't like to toot my own horn, even though I'm known as a pretty loud <laughs> and angry guy. I don't know why I get that, but you know, it's fine. It's fine. Um, as far as this league, you know what? Anybody, uh, anybody, bring it. Right. I may not win, but I'll I'll go to the end. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you playing. Let us right now get our winner, Adelaide Spence, to answer some questions. Adelaide, what are you doing? Like this is amazing. You played great in round number in round one, seven out of eight questions, and barely missed that one that you did with Willem Dafoe instead of Christopher Walken. You did pretty okay. You know, you maintained your lead in round number two, and then you were killing it in round number three. You got both your questions correct to force Bill to answer that last question. How do you feel about your performance? So I cannot think straight. <laughs> I am in a wool sweater at 85 degrees. I am severely dehydrated. Oh. Uh, I have barely had food and water today. I was terrified coming to this match. Bill is someone who I respect a lot. And he, I mean, he can tell you himself, there's very few players of his caliber that I speak more highly of than him. And I knew that round three is going to be my downfall today. The fact I got that four-point question is besides me. <laughs> No, you, you you did. You ended up getting that question right. Um, listen, I you I've been around you since you came into the league, um, and to see this performance based on some of the beginning performances you've had, holy dude, wow! <laughs> you 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 really really impressed me today, and I think that you're going to impress a lot of people when they see this match. Congratulations, Adam. Anything, Dad? Yeah, Adelaide, you really you really showed a lot of skill in that first round. Uh, you came in prepared. Um, you know, I I think it's start. It's time for you to start giving yourself some credit. I can give myself credit. I just can't fucking believe this happened. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and on spinners opponents too. Uh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I I yeah. totally forgot to mention that to get like Bill gets his cat like his color, and then you spin. His color, and you're still able to, you know, to pull out the win. I think it's a great accomplishment. Thank you so much for playing in here today. Anybody, you're going to get another match before the end of this season. Anybody you want to call out and say, hey, I look mean, at me hey, now. 
I'll take an ego check. Caleb Bowman, you're 0 and 3. 1 and 0, 0 and 3 bounces out, right? Let's go. I don't know. Let's, let's fucking do this. Uh, I don't know. Just please, someone that gives me less of a heart attack. <laughs> well, we're going to see about that in just a second. But once again, congratulations on today. You did amazing. We will see you coming up relatively soon in this league after you get yourself a break. Yeah. Well, Adam, that wraps up our debut episode of Full Metal Trivia, season number five, and we couldn't have had a better match to go down to it, down to the last question, pretty much. Uh, what did you think about this match today, and uh, when do you want to come back and host some more? Well, if Adelaide plays Boatman, I would definitely be interested in joining that party. I hosted a match with them, uh, or no, no, I didn't host one real questions back in the day for a match they played against each other. So yeah, I'd love to come host one, but no, I, I am familiar with Bill and Adelaide, uh, very fond of them both, very impressed uh, with how their gameplay uh, uh, continues to be. Um, and I think they, they showed uh, again, a lot of heart on both sides today. And there was a lot of respect, which is always nice to see. It definitely is. It, you know, it's a big online community, but you know, when you can have people that treat each other and act around each other with respect, it always makes things a whole lot more fun. But you know what? That's going to be it for us today. Um, it was a great match. Adam, thank you so much for being here. We're all excited and fans of yours up in the Big Schmo down. So continue kicking ass up there. You got a bunch of people down here rooting you on. I am however sandy the sandman robinson and like always please like comment and and share these matches we appreciate it and to you the fans who are watching we can't do this without you season five is kicked off we're about to go gun blazing all the way up to this year's snowball so remember end of Jan end of december the snowball five will be here and we're ramping up right now thanks again so much and until next time have fun Watch movies. Thanks, folks.